Hi, everybody. Sun and welcome to Reality Buzz TV, you guys. Listen, we are going to do the full review of uh, Real Housewives of Devon. And instead of doing uh, a live, I decided that I will record it because of how my morning is set up. I can't uh, do a live, you guys. But listen, it was a great episode. They are confusing me a little bit because I thought that the episodes are supposed to be uh, coming on on Friday. But apparently yesterday the episode was already posted. Otherwise, I would have done uh, this review yesterday uh, morning. But nonetheless, you guys, I watched it uh, last night, finally the episode. And I have a lot of things to talk about when it comes to this episode. So do join me, you guys. Before we begin, you guys, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel and that you do like this video before you watch it. And also, I do have the other channel in Dandom Ledger, if you are somebody that likes Umgos, okay? If you're interested in Izin Dabazabantu, please make sure that you are subscribed to Dandom Ledger. And also on this channel, you guys, we did just get monetized. So make sure that you watch my playlist if you go on my channel. If below, you press my name and go on my channel, there are different tips there. There's video, there's live, there's community. And then uh, there is a playlist. You can play some of my playlists so that we can start making money on this channel and i appreciate that so much you guys and there is a membership and it's only just 20 rents if you want to support the channel so how do i feel about uh, this episode you guys i think it was a good episode i think it was better than episode one definitely you guys i want to say thanks to angel but i'm not understanding why i still don't really like her i don't know why i'm not liking angel guys because uh she is kind of doing what usane did which is coming with the bank and talk about things that have nothing to do with you you know things that happen in a season that you were not part of and uh and she's getting people to talk and she's making people uncomfortable which is what usane did but i'm not understanding why i liked usane but I'm just not liking Angel that much, you guys. I need a little bit of time with Angel. There's just something that uh, for me is not likable for her. Not like it's something personal, but just for the show. There's just something, I'm like, why am I not liking her? Because she's actually the one that uh, is getting people to talk about things that people don't want to talk about, you guys. So there are moments where you do feel like Angel is just doing a little bit, it's just, it's just doing too much, okay? <laughs> But let me let me see you guys. I'll watch a few episodes and see if I get to I, I fall in like with her, you guys. Another thing is the gaze, you guys. You, you guys know if you wa watch my reviews of Real Housewives, any franchise, I always just feel like I want to see the women. Okay, if they want to create the show for the gaze, create the show for the gaze. Okay, I do love the gaze, but sometimes they just give them too much air times on this show when I feel like. I just want to see my women, okay? So in this episode, it was a little bit more about the gays. And I don't know, you guys. I think that these women are, are trying to avoid talking about issues that we want them to talk about, the things that uh, took place last season. They don't want to have these sit-downs where they talk about their friendships. They would rather bring the gas bands and the gas bands fight over them rather than them talk about the things that we want to talk about. So there was there was a you know a scene that I felt like lasted longer than it should have been because the things that were being discussed were not about uh the woman, you guys. Listen, when we begin, the first scene was Sorisha and Maria. I guess you guys they're becoming friends. Uh, because remember, last season it was the battle of the queens, okay. Uh, Maria was convinced that Sorisha thinks she is the queen, but she's not really the queen that she thinks she is. And uh, and Sorisha uh, was just acting like a queen. <laughs> so there was that battle. So I think that's a thing that made them made it difficult for them to be, become like real friends in season one. I think right now they don't have a choice because, of course, Sorisha doesn't have a close friend like she did last season, which was any. So she's forced to build friendships with these women. They're going for yoga, you guys. And apparently, uh, um Maria wanted to give Sorisha a, 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 a thank you gift because she had done that event that really didn't go <laughs> as planned. Because in that event, Sorisha's event, they were supposed to talk about the issues that they have with each other, but they didn't. So they do talk about that situation of how everybody avoided talking about the real issues, okay? Then she goes into talking about how season 
three made her feel. That is Maria, okay? Remember, you guys, I mean, I think for us, sometimes we forget that these are people and, you know, it's very difficult when people make comments about how you look. And uh, Maria's lips were a big discussion last season uh, because they were huge, okay? And um, every chance that Unoku got to make a comment about Maria's lips, she would make the comments. And she says that that thing affected her. She went through uh, depression. She says that uh, that's the reason she even went and deflated her lips. But the thing about it is that after she deflated her lips, when we all were thinking she looks beautiful with the deflated lips, she wasn't feeling them, okay? She just felt like every time she looked in the mirror, she felt like she's not herself. She wanted to go back and put in the fillers. So she said, listen, I'm extra, that's who I am, so I want my big lips back, you guys. I absolutely feel like Maria looks better without the lips. But I also do feel like it's not important how we feel about her, it's important how she feels about herself. So if she's at a point where she feels like she feels better with the bigger lips, then she must get the bigger lips. But I still feel like you look better without the bigger lips. But if for you to feel better, then just get the bigger lips because that's how you feel. If you're getting depressed because your lips are smaller, we don't want you depressed. So just get uh, the bigger lips, okay? And then uh, they do talk about what happened with the kid comment with Angel and all of that, you guys. So she makes a comment to say, listen, I like Zama. I like her reaction to what was going on with uh, Angel. But I do feel like she's holding back. I feel like we, we're probably going to see more of Uzama. I definitely feel like that. I feel like Zama was very conscious of the fact that this is my first episode, but it's not the first season, okay? Meaning that even though it is my first episode, but people have been around here for longer. So let me take time you know, to feel the energy, feel the people before I speak too much. I feel like that was her approach, whereas Angel just came in with a bang. Angel is coming in as if she was there in season one, okay? If there's a thing to talk about that happened in season one, she's going to talk about it, okay? So they are coming in different. So I kind of do agree with Sorisha to say Zama is holding back, but definitely she will. Uh, I feel like we are going to see more of her personality as we move on with uh, the season. The next uh, scene, you guys, it was Uzama and her sister. I think she said Uzine, Uzine, Uzime, something like that. And they were take, taking a walk somewhere. And they get to sit down and just have a conversation. I guess she wanted to update her sister how her joining the show has been like. She says every everybody has been nice, of course. And uh, she talked about the event, how the event was like. And then she says that, you know what? You know, she felt like she felt very good that when uh, Angel was trying to come for her, I think it was Nongu and um, and also um, Sli that were like, but girl, you were the one that uh, started calling yourself a baby, referring to Angel. So she said she felt good about that. She felt like she didn't need to say much because they had already pointed out the very thing that she was thinking that this girl has been going around talking to everybody about how she is a baby. Now she has a problem uh, with it, okay? So she has a problem with her calling her a kid. So you guys, she does talk about the fact that she is going, uh, she has to go for some tests because there is a fertility issue because back in 2020, she was um, diagnosed with fibroids back in 2020 during um, COVID and she had to have surgery and she has to go back because she needs to check if that has not affected her fertility, okay? Listen, you guys, I do feel like that, that is an interesting storyline. It's a real life story, but I do kind of feel like we've seen a lot of uh, fertility uh, storylines uh, with like fibroids as part of it. So I do wonder, you guys, if we are going and see, to see anything different with the storyline because she's going to be going to the doctor. The doctor's going to be giving her an update. Does she still have fibroids? Are they gone? What are the chances of her having a baby? What does she need to do to have a baby? What options do she, does she have? So it kind of feels to me like I hope that's not all that you're going to give us. It is an interesting storyline. Maybe for an episode, you know, and uh, not longer than that because I do feel like we've seen 
multiple women go with that storyline and I, I kind of feel like maybe we've seen enough of it. Not to say that it's invalid, her storyline. I, I, I do believe that that is something that is happening in her life, but I do feel like as a storyline, I do wonder if it's going to be interesting, but be, because on a reality show, we've seen so many uh, women uh, go with that storyline, sharing that story when it comes to uh, the reality show. Guys, the funny uh, scene was Uchojo trying to cook for her husband. <laughs> Why did our mothers try and tell us when we were younger that, you know, you need to learn to cook, you need to learn to clean, you need to learn to, uh, you know, uh, do the washing? Why did they play with us like that? And they would say, because every time Maui Villa, but yo, yo, Kanapi, and they were like, you will never find a husband, Maui Villa, and why did our mothers lie to us? Eh? Because how did Jojo find a husband? <laughs> our mothers. The lies that they told us, saying that if we can't cook, we won't find husbands. That is not true. You can definitely find a blue bear or a blue bear. <laughs> Jojo has managed to find a blue bear and she was burning all of the food. The food was looking horrible, you guys. You, I don't know. It was the chicken breast. And what else was she cooking? But it was burnt and looking very uh, colorless, okay? <laughs> And it was a funny thing, you guys. I think that they were supposed to sit and have like a nice meal. I don't know how they thought that that was going to happen if Jojo can't cook. They should have just uh, ordered a, a meal, you guys. And then it was an interesting scene. Listen, this might have been my favorite scene in this episode. And that is Usli with her brother. By the way, you guys, listen. You know, I know hey, I have single people in my on, on my channel. Okay, should we be finding out if Sli's brother is single? Because I was like, he, he's looking cute, okay? <laughs> I was like, that is a handsome Zulu boy, okay? All right, okay, who is single in the comment section? Let us know in the comment section. Should we be under this comment section trying to find out if her brother is single so that maybe we can hook you up because he is handsome, you guys. Not only is he handsome, I like the way that he was communicating uh, communicating with his sister. So they are brothers. My understanding of that scene was that uh, they are siblings and uh, they don't have the same mother. It felt that way, even though they didn't go into details in explaining it. Don't not only do they not have the same um mother, but also I do feel like Sli's little sister, the one that we've seen on the show, might not be uh part of the sibling uh group from the father's side. Maybe her sister has her father, and yeah. So uh they went quite biking, and then after that, they were having a conversation, a conversation about Slee's dad. I had forgotten that Slee had said that the, uh, her mother had passed away, so she does not have a mother right now, only her father is alive. So they're talking with her brother, you guys, and I think she's having struggles because she said when she was younger, you know, you could tell her nothing about, you know, her uh, father. I think when you are younger, you guys, you, you guys or your father automatically becomes your hero. But then throughout the, your life, they will do things that will prove to you that they're actually not heroes. So every time you get disappointed, it's like a reality, uh, like reality hits you that your father is actually not the hero that you thought he was. And I think that's the thing that happened with Lucy. You could tell her nothing about her father when she was younger, but she remembers uh, moments where her mom would say, your father is going to come and see you. And then the father would uh, not come, you guys. I remember one time I was uh, sitting where we lived, uh, like in the lounge and the kids were playing outside. And then they sat down, like, you know, maybe like four or five kids and they sat down and they're talking. And then this one kid would say, hey, my father would do this. And so I'm listening to the conversation and then the other one will also say, and then the other one will also say, and then I'm looking outside and I'm seeing that these kids, maybe like one out of the group of those kids had a father that was present. A lot of them, it was like fantasy that they were talking about. And the way that you could see that the way that they think about their fathers is like heroes, my father, you know, my father is going to buy me this big thing. It's going to take me to this place. They were basically just writing a movie while sitting there because a lot of them, I knew very well that their fathers were not in their lives. Okay. Some of them didn't even know their fathers. Okay. So I thought it was interesting that for a child, automatically a father becomes a hero in their mind until 
you know, uh, it comes a point where it's proven to them that they're not that hero. And I feel like that's that's the thing I was getting from the conversation that U Usli was having with his brother. So she says, Uguti, and you know what? Uh, she feels like her father communicates with, I guess they're not really in like constant communication with her father. So she feels that uh, she doesn't understand how he is able to be in communication with the other siblings. He will be, she will be hearing her other sister saying, "I called my father, even with her brother." I think she said, "When did you speak to my father?" And the brother was like, "Maybe two days ago, something like that." Okay, and then she just started crying because she is feeling like, uh, "How come you guys are able to just be in contact with him like that, and I'm not able to do that?" And then her brother is like, "Listen, okay." The the reason, if you if you ask me when last I spoke to my father, and I say just a few hours ago, don't think that it's because he called me. It's because I called him. So I decided at some point for my sanity, I just need to do that. Okay. So don't be sitting here thinking our father is calling us. When we say to you that we've been talking to our father, we've spent time with our father, we've done this with our father, don't be thinking that he is making an effort with us he is not we are making an effort with him because i guess they just you know they just with the reality of this man is not gonna do what a father is supposed to do which is you know uh be the one that you know gives more to a relationship so they just decided to be the ones that do it and that's why they get to spend time with him and chat to him uh more you guys so Sli says that that is something that she's going to confront listen you guys I don't like that Usli is very, uh, what's the word, intentional about, I'm a storyline, she was very intentional about, you know, last season showing us her spiritual journey, which we had enough of. I'm glad that we're not going to see more of that because we, we saw enough. Okay, fine, Unestunya, okay? <laughs> Unestunya, thank you, good for you. Can we move on to other storylines? Okay, we saw enough of this saying, listen, I'm financially overstretched, okay? Are you better this season? Okay, let's move on now. I like that. So I like the fact that she's intentional about, you know, wanting to give us something different for the season and what she's giving us is, I mean, a little bit of a family. I do hope that we do see the father, but she's uh, nervous about, you guys, the conversation with her father. This is the thing, though, even though I'm going to like the storyline, I do feel like it's a little bit risky when you don't have a good relationship with your parent, but then you decide to fix it on national television because they might not appreciate it so much. Even for them, it might feel like, oh, so now you just want to use me for this role that you have on a TV show. So I don't know. I, I do feel like it's risky to do that, but I'm still looking forward to uh, seeing it, you guys. So... Now we get into the angel story, you guys, okay? <laughs> because angel be telling white lies, okay? I'm like, angel at this point is like a combination of Londi London and Sane. Sane because she just wants to come in and talk about things that have nothing to do with her, which we partly love because if she doesn't do that, then nobody's going to talk. But she's also just telling stories that just don't add up, okay? So there's a scene where she's with her mom, and I guess it's her aunt. I didn't really pay attention to who the other woman is. I just understood it's a family. And you know that thing of mothers when you come, they always say, hey, you, you know, and then the next time you come and you've given like, Yo, I will see, I will see. you know, <laughs> at home, guys, you're just never perfect. It's all that. Now, let me tell you this, okay? She says that she's been with her boyfriend. Somewhere in the conversation with her mom, she says they've been with her boyfriend for like 10 years, but they've only been serious for like a year. So I'm like, okay, 10 years serious for a year. I, okay, fine. And then she says that the boy now wants to come as a coquille of I'm like, Angel, unless you had another conversation away from the cameras about this issue. If you're talking about the conversation that we saw on TV, that is not what the boy said. Okay, this is why I say, this is another um, Londi London story because you remember Londi London was the one, the only one that was talking about Angalobolo, uh, Azokokovalobolo, remember, so what, what, preparing, and her man was over there busy with the other women, okay? <laughs> Angel, that is not what that boy said. 
you talked about the low ball asset. So, you know, sometimes in relationships, we're like, this is what we do sometimes. And then we say, men, you know, men don't listen or something. Because in that conversation with her man, she said, listen, you know, my mother wants in common, whatever. Her man was like, listen, I do want to do that. I do want to eventually, you know, get to that place. But right now, right now, I just want us to get our bag. So I want us to be about our business. So she wants them, he wants them to focus on their business right now. She's like, maybe in the future, I would like to do it and I would like to do it the right way, but not right now. But that is not what she's telling her mama. You know, she's talking as if the is in coma is coming tomorrow. I'm like, Angel, okay. I guess you had another conversation with your man. Because if you are talking about the conversation we saw, that's not what that boy said. That boy said that for now, he wants you to be about your business. Okay. I think Obama was just excited, you guys. I think that mama is feeling like in Como is excited when no cows are coming, mama. <laughs> I hope they do come, though. But that's not the point. The point is very clear. I was like, you know, we, we want men that communicate like that and say, listen, I do understand you want in Como, but right now this is what I want us to focus uh, on, you guys. So then she introduces the fertility story. Guys, I don't want to sound horrible to say that, you know, it's a lot when women start talking about their fertility issue on a reality TV show. But I do feel like we're just repeating the same storylines. Can we say something else? Okay. <laughs> I guess someone has my comment saying, I know a lot of women are dealing with fertility issues, so it's good for us to see it. But I mean, guys, we're going to be dealing with the fertility storyline with them, and then we're going to deal, deal with the fertility storyline with uh, Angel. Uh, no, I want to see something else. Please, please give us something else. She says that at some point she had lumps on her breast. She went for a test, and and then uh, the, 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 the lumps were uh, removed. It wasn't cancer. And then uh, she said she got on for, um, contraceptives and then that affected her fertility. I'm like, yeah, contraceptives are supposed to affect your fertility because they, they are supposed to make sure that you don't have a baby, but you can stop them and then have a baby. So I didn't understand that part, you guys. Uh, I mean, they're not supposed to permanently affect your fertility, but she's talking as if they permanently might have um, or they might have permanently affected her fertility. Guys, I can't deal with two fertility storylines on the same show. You know, I need, <laughs> I need Angel or Zama to do something else on the show. Okay, so we're dealing with the doctor's appointments and all of that. With the with the with the men that usually don't want these babies, they'll be going to these appointments on reality shows with you. And then we find out later on he never wanted no baby. Okay. And then it, it didn't um oh, what's that umbal umbalistis would do the same fertility I think last last time I guys no I feel like I've had enough but yeah you can you can reprimand me in the comment section and say that we need a fit we need five fertility stories on the on the same show <laughs> I know I've had enough of fertility storylines okay now it was a hangout you guys Maria Zama and why did I, uh, I write Maria Zama and Maria? They are hanging out. <laughs> it was Maria Zama and and Asli. Uh, they're hanging out, and the other side, the other ladies were hanging out. It was Unonku, Ujojo, and uh, Angel. Yeah, you see, Sorisha doesn't have a friend on this show. <laughs> She needs some friends. So they were hanging out, you guys. And I guess they wanted they, they were discussing a little bit about, you know, Nongu and Usli. Usli says, I think Usli is expecting apologies, but I think Usli owes not just Unonku, but the show, the viewers, everybody an apology for trying to get physical on that show. I do feel like she just needs to say, listen, there was wrong of me to do. I'm sorry I did it. Okay. But I feel like more than her wanting to apologize, she was expecting apologies. So I'm like, what apologies? Because they said you were financially overstretched, because they said you took a friend's car. Remember last season, you took a friend's car and never returned it, but you ended up admitting that some of those things were true. You know, it's just the way that they were put. I don't know, you guys. But she says she's willing to set some accountability, but she feels like she is owed um, a conversation or an apology. And then they do talk about the age issue when it comes to uh, Angel. Apparently, there's a whole conversation that took place before uh, the, the attack on, um, 
or not the attack, maybe the exchange between Zama and Angel. There was a whole conversation that took place between uh, the ladies talking about the age thing. So by the time they sat down, everybody understood that she does not mind being referred to as a baby because she's younger than everybody. Okay. And yeah, you guys. So I was like, oh, so I guess that's why Uzama felt like it wasn't a big thing for her to say, even though she was being shady a little bit, guys. If we're being honest, she was being a shady little bit. So that's why Uzama felt like, you know what? I can just be shady, you know, and say this. Okay. So it was a um nice hangout uh between the ladies. I think it's just them getting to know each other, who's gonna who's going to get along with who at this point. And then there was also Ujojo and Angel hanging out at the art thing. And uh, and then you guys, Ujojo, no Angel, and I think no Nongo. Well, yeah, Nongo was part of this um, meeting here. They were going to an art studio. Remember, Ujojo is an artist too. She paints, I think she paints and she draws something like that. So they get to talk about the kid comment. Guys, I hope this is the last episode we hear about the kid comment because I can't take it. It wasn't that deep, honestly, to be made into like an actual storyline. Somebody called you a kid after you called yourself a baby. You know, <laughs> after you call yourself a baby, like, can we be done with this? So she says that she was triggered by the word kid. I'm like, kid, baby, like, uh, uh. You know, it doesn't sometimes guys say hey, it's in a special as is understood. Okay, in Ghana, in Ghana, as doing Ghana, a baby in Ghana, a kid in Ghana. Do you even understand that? Would <laughs> had they just said it in Zulu, nobody would have an issue with it. Okay, um, then you guys, you said she was uh, triggered by the word um, kid, but they, they still don't understand it. Okay. And then she says, they were asking her how long she knows Maria, because remember, O Angel is supposed to be brought on the show by Maria as a designer, you know, because she was supposed to help Lee uh, design some clothes, okay? So uh, she says, yeah, she's known Maria for six months. I was like, mm -mm, you probably have known her for two months. <laughs> Or maybe let's say six weeks, okay? Six weeks before they shot the show, okay? It doesn't look like they know each other. And and uh, Angel, uh, she tells them about a man. This is where she tells, it's either she's telling a lie here or she told a lie when she was sitting with her mom and her aunt or whoever that lady was. She says to the lady, the ladies are asking her, oh, do you have a man? She's like, yeah, I do have a man. And then how long have you been with her for a year? I was like, how? What happened to the nine years, Angel? Because when you're talking to a mom, you said you've been together for 10 years, but only serious for one. With the lady, you say we've only been together for... What happened to the... Where's the nine years? Guys, nine years is a very long time in a relationship to just be deducted like that, okay? <laughs> we can't just be uh, doing the uh, subtraction in class all of a sudden and nobody can explain why we are subtracting nine years out of a relationship. I'm like, ah... Now I'm sitting here wondering, are you even in a relationship with this boy? Okay. Is this relationship real? Did you just call uh, your, one of your friends and say, listen, come over here. Let's pretend to be in a relationship. Because for some reason, you guys, these ladies always feel a need to be in some kind of a relationship when they're on Real Housewives. I don't know if the producers tell them that, you know what, you need to have a man to be part of the show. I'm starting to think maybe, maybe that's the case because I don't know why they put themselves under this pressure. I really feel like, girl, like now I'm going to want to look closely into your relationship because because how are you in one conversation in this relationship for 10 years and then in another uh, conversation you've been in this relationship for one year exactly how long have you been in your relationship is it even a relationship or you've been in some type of an agreement we've known uh, housewives to rent boyfriends okay so it wouldn't be you to deb it we even know petal okay that we have never met okay <laughs> petal who had a yard okay Petal had a yacht. We never saw Petal. We never saw a yacht. Okay, so trust me. We we know very well of husbands that don't exist and boyfriends that don't exist. At least yours we saw. But the question is, are you really in a relationship with him? If you don't even know you are, how long you've been in a relationship with him? They get to talk about the construction thing, you guys, because she says she's in construction and Nungu is in construction. So now I'm like, okay, listen, I need to contact somebody 
I need to take a clip of this conversation, send it to a lady that I know who is in construction and say, explain it to me, okay? Because they were talking about level, and I don't know who has level seven and level six, and then level six with something, and then, ooh, 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 Lona. And I said, it's level six without what, what, you know? And then Nongu was like, as if she's saying, I can take Jalugu construction. <laughs> Like, hey, oh, Angel, is there anything? Is there anything more that we need to know about you that might not exist? Okay, so there was that thing. Okay, uh, Ononku is not saying that she knows Angel before the show, but she's also not denying that she knows Angel. But I feel like Nonku might actually be able to give us some tea on Angel because. First, it was the dress that she was wearing that is exactly like Nonku's. Now she's in construction uh, like Nonku, you know? <laughs> the only difference is that she has a, a man that is about to pay low. But, well, Nonku did have a man that was about to pay low. What do you know? <laughs> so, yes, you guys, there was something funny about the construction conversation, okay? And, uh, yeah, okay. She said she made a dress for Nonku. At some point, she was acting like she doesn't know Nonku. It's the first time she meets Nonku, but then Nonku is like, you know, there was a time when you made a dress for me. <laughs> guys, it's a funny thing with the angel. I don't know, you guys. I think we're going to discover a lot. I hope she doesn't lose, a, you know, control of all of the stories that she's telling because they do come back around, okay? We are only in episode two. By episode 12, we come back around to ask you questions about what you said in episode one. I hope that you are keeping, I hope you have a notebook in your, in your bag that you're writing all of these lies that you're telling us, okay? <laughs> Listen, you guys, I must have I missed something with Maria because I thought Maria was in a happy marriage with this rich husband, but she was talking to somebody on the phone who is supposed to be her son's father, her ex-husband. I'm like, Maria has an ex-husband. Did I miss something? <laughs> They don't even spend a lot of time uh, with that uh, uh, scene, you guys. For us, to, and I was like, Maria has a, and an ex-husband, and her son is not. I, I was confused, you guys. I need to understand more about Maria. Is she currently married? Is she not married? And also, if she's not married, how is she rich? Then we need to find out what does Maria do. Is it the alimony that is still keeping her rich? What what's happening there? Anyway, you guys. Then it was the scene. Listen, you guys. This scene right here, I won't get into details more because I did post a video on the channel here that says Nonku exposes RD because uh, I give a little bit of details of what she talks about. So Nonku is having a sit down with his sister Onoxi talking about how uh, the relationship with, uh, how she regretted the relationship with RD, you guys. She says she regretted, she feels like RD used Umuti on her. And uh, because she found the Moses coming sack. Guys, I know people are saying, no, no, go just doesn't want to take responsibility for the bad decisions she made when she came to that relationship. But I absolutely believe go to Arti was a Moti on Nonko because how is Arti getting all of these beautiful women that he is getting when he is publicly being declared a scammer? Because Nonko has come out here, even in this as a down, she does say Uguzu, he stole a material from her side. So, you know, she's in construction and she said that he, he will come and steal the material there and the employees will see him steal the material and and they wouldn't tell Nonku because remember Nonku being a about to RT. And so who wants to date a man that was on national TV and they're claiming that he scammed people on national TV, you know? So I'm like, I absolutely believe that there's something that this guy is using because he's getting these beautiful women who are career driven, have lots of money. And he always looks like he's the one that has money, but at the end he doesn't, they have money. So I'm like, I believe Nonko, you guys. Even though I do feel like she needs to take accountability. You need to be accountable for how you brought this man to your house where your daughter and your sons were, a man that had been in prison convicted of an art. I remember you guys when people were coming for us when we were talking about that story. And we were like, hey, well, nobody sh should be allowed to bring a man that has been convicted of an art to her house where her children live. And people are like, no, I mean, uh, he's already out. He served his time. Guys, you can serve your time. But if you've been convicted of an hour, you're not coming anywhere close to my kids. You're not coming anywhere close to me. You know, good for you. You served your time. But after that, it's like, yeah, 
I don't want you next to my kids. You know, and people were coming for us when we did those videos to say, Aibo, something is wrong here. Okay. Now she is seeing that something is wrong. She regrets the fact that she puts her kids through that. I do feel like you guys, there's a lot that happened even with her kids at that house that she was living in with that man and her kids. Okay. I feel like, I don't know if she's going to reveal it to us, but I feel like it's more, I'm almost scared to find out what happened because she really feels, it really looks like she regrets, um, putting her kids through that. She does say, you guys, that actually was never her type. She's not, he's not your type. Next time, don't go just, you know, bring a few men over here on the internet, let the people decide who's your type because clearly you are not able to choose your type. Finally, you guys, because Maria obviously had decided she, he's, she's going to be messy and do this event where she is saying uh, that everybody must bring their gas band. So it's a gas band appreciation uh, event. So you have to bring your gay, you know, bring your gay like a, a, a gay is like a pest. <laughs> Sometimes how they speak about gays is like a pest. Bring your gay, you know, bring your bag, you know, handbag. <laughs> so everybody's supposed to bring a gas band. And I'm like, what if you don't have a gas band? What are you going to do with you? No, cool. I guess, well, I guess it's her gas band too, because I think the lady is a gay that she brought. So everybody, this is what I think happened with this scene, you guys. Because not everybody has a husband, okay? And not everybody has a husband that wants to be on TV. And not everybody has a husband that has a good enough personality to be on TV, okay? So I do think that the, this producer has just casted a few gay guys. You know, they casted them and then they matched them with the right people. The only person that really has a real husband there is uh usorisha because from season one we've seen usorisha with her husband a guy that just comes with her to the events and make sure that usorisha is good doesn't speak a lot and only speaks to her friend because she, he is only friends with and he doesn't always seem like he wants to be on tv a lot and i like that i feel like that relationship is genuine and then there's rue who clearly wanted to be on tv because she appro he approached ujojo when they were doing some work on Real Housewives. And then he was like, I really wanna be your friend. I'm like, yeah, he was casted, you guys. He was casted, Ru was casted, okay? There might be real friends now with Jojo, but Ru was casted for the show. And then there's Neil, uh, who's also casted for the show, because where, does, where did Neil come from? If Neil had always been friends with uh, Maria, then Neil would know uh, and, and be friends with um, Ru and Jojo. Ru, uh, but he came out of nowhere, obviously casted, Okay. And then there was another one. I didn't get his name. The one that was uh, with um, Slee. That guy looked like he was like, guys, when is this going to be over so I can go back to my real life? He looked like that. He was cute, but he was looking like, listen, I can't wait to get out of here. <laughs> and then there was a Lungelo. Okay. Lungelo, you guys, if you want to uh, know Lungelo is here. He is a YouTuber, a podcaster. Uh, his channel is called... Um, engineer your life okay uh does like interviews here on youtube if you want to see him you can go see him on his channel and watch his channel so lungelo also was casted because i think lungelo does know a few of the housewives because i've seen him interview a few of them i saw him interview Nuku. i think i saw uh, i've seen him interview Lee. i've seen him interview uh Omabusi. and he will be speaking to them like he knows them okay so I felt like he, this guy was also casted. And then he was meshed with Angel, whom he doesn't know very well, whom Angel doesn't know very well. So when they're sitting at the table and they were all supposed to introduce each other, introduce their husbands, and then tell everybody how they met them. And then she says that Ulungelo is Lungelo uh, MK. I think Lungelo is Lungelo KM. And then I'm like, now we are supposed to believe that this is a friend that those people don't know each other. That's like you guys don't know each other. You guys are not friends. Listen, okay. Nobody is going to come. None of my friends, you guys, are going to come here and say that my name is Ndando Koba, for an example. Just make a mistake. I, I oh I no no no, she's stand on ledge. I know none of my friends are going to do. They know all of my names. You know, they know which one is my first name, which one is my second name. They know all of my names. Like, no friend is going to make a mistake. <sighs> like, look, look, uh, MK, MK, Gaga, Zoom. <laughs> look, I love my son, MK. It's a calling, okay? 
So that was weird, you guys, that it did feel like those people were just, they, they were matched with the cast, okay? And I don't even know, I don't understand the obsession with bringing in many gays when it comes to the real housewives, okay? I don't get it. And and I feel like, obviously, if they bring you on, you're going to take the opportunity to be on the show because this is a big show. It's a show mix show after all, okay? So then, you guys, uh, I mean, I think initially there was, shade, there was shade, okay? Because, of course, Maria is with Neil and Jojo is with um, Ru, okay? But I do feel like they were trying to just be, you know, or, you know respectful, and at some point, Neil even offered Ru a drink. She was like, you know, should I get you a drink? Give her a drink because it's Maria's event, remember? So I think for the most part, they were trying to be, but they were also pretending, I guess, to be getting along. They sit down to eat and everything. And uh, then, uh, okay, so the introductions happened. That is where O Angel, a better con, like, no, that is not my name because, girl, you are also not my friend. <laughs> But he won't say that because, of course, he wants to be on this show, you know. I feel like they could have brought Lungel Mklape with someone else. Maybe like Unonku or someone, even Usli. I, I didn't understand the matching with Angel when it was just clear that they just don't know each other. There was just nothing there that felt like these are like besties or something. Anyway, you guys, so, uh, Yeah. So you guys, I guess, you know, the drinks are coming on and uh, coming in and all of that, you know, the conversation is uh, going on on the table. And then uh, Unonku says something like she does, she no longer drinks because Nonku is always on some kind of a mission. Um, last season it was her and uh, being celibate and, uh, and, and saying that she, she had a celibacy party or something like that, okay? She had been... Uh, she had abstained for a number of months and then she was going back because Arti was in her life. And then you guys, and uh, now she says that she doesn't drink anymore, which is good for Nunku. So when she mentions, guys, I don't drink anymore. Can I have green tea? Because I don't drink anymore. And she said, guys, she could have just said, guys, can I have drink, uh, green tea? And they would have brought green tea for her. But she wanted people to know, I don't, drink. can I have green tea, guys? By the way, I don't drink anymore you know and then she was like oh you don't we must uh, have a, a a sober party for you okay i know Lou was being shady a little bit but i also feel like she's not wrong you guys noko was the one that actually said in one scene that there isn't a day where she goes without alcohol there is a lot of alcohol guys but it was the wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday and then you start again every single day there is not a single day that you go without alcohol there is a lot of drinking, okay? You are, might not be an alcoholic, but there is something about alcohol in you, okay? So I don't feel like Kusli was wrong, even though she was being shady when she said, we need to draw, draw you a, a sober party. She's like, why? Why do I need to? And then we talked on that side, like, why, why does she need a sober party? And I'm like, but it's simple because she's sober for the very first time since she started Real Housewives of Durban. We've never seen Ononko sober ever since, guys. This is going to be the first season where she's sober. So she needs a sober party, okay? She needs a sober, we need a sober party for Ononko to say, hey, girl, finally, just one season without, you know? So uh, then Usli uh, said she wasn't trying to be shady, but, you know, everybody gets what she was trying to say, but everybody was like, what you being shady, girl, you know? Anyway, she said, but if you say I need a sober party, that means that I was a drunkard, and I was like, you might not have been a drunkard, but you drink a lot. You know? You know what I mean, guys? Everybody that wanted to come for no good, the first thing they would say was like, yeah, value when I was stuck. Go a value. That's what Londi London said. That's what, uh, what's the, who's the other lady? Oh, um, Mbaliasizo said, because she drinks a lot. That's the first thing you notice going on cool uh, when you met her on the show was that she drinks a lot. So what's wrong with her having a sober party? She's sober for the very first time after four seasons on the show. <laughs> okay. So uh, that, uh, that started uh, a little bit of tension, but everybody was like, oh, no, we understand. I guess they understand uh, the sober party. Like, okay, it might not be a sober party, but you need a party, okay? Then you guys, uh, Angel had to figure herself there, Pagati Pagati, because she said, you know what? I like tea, but this is the tea that I want to know about, okay? You guys have been shading, pointing to Maria, no, no, you guys have been shading. Guys, I feel like even if Ru, even if 
Neil and Maria were shading rule. Ungena point. <laughs> Ungena. But at the same time, I feel like, okay, if that's what we need for these girls to start talking about real issues in this group, then maybe, okay? And then Anil is like, why are you trying to start something? Then all oh, oh, Neil, no, no, Angel end up having something because Neil is just convinced that oh, Angel wants to start drama for no reason. She says, listen, yeah, there's a little bit of shade. Like when I, I was standing up, uh, Jojo and Ru roll their eyes, but it's like light shade, who cares, okay? And then oh, Angel insists, oh, Angel started asking, so how come you, meaning Maria and Ru are no longer friends? I'm like, <laughs> she's going to have a hard time building friendships in this group, you guys, because I think that she is in, uh, involving herself in things that have nothing to do with her, but at the same time, she's getting people to talk. It's going to be a sunny situation very, very soon where people don't want to be around her because she's just involved in things that she shouldn't be involved in, okay? So, you guys, of course, Maria ended up explaining, listen, Ru, I don't have anything against you. I feel like I've been clear that we will never be friends, but I don't hate you. And Uru was trying to speak shame. And Uru, Uru, Uruan had that thing. I really don't think that Uru, Uruan is for reality TV because he's not assertive enough. Like, finally, Lapayan creates a moment for people to listen to if you want to be listened to. So every time he's trying to speak, he won't uh, finish a sentence. Sometimes he won't even start a sentence because while he's trying to put his thoughts together to make up a sentence, then, you know, someone will just uh, say something, okay? But, uh, yes, you guys, Ru really wants to move on because even in the car, I think Jojo was trying to get him you know, uh, to start something because in the car, Jojo was like, tell me, eh, before, when you were friends with Maria, how many times did you go to her house? And he was like, I don't know, uh, two or three times. I think Jojo was trying to get U Uru in that mode of starting drama to say, you were never my friend to Maria. But Ru is like, guys, I want to move on. Let's just say, yes, all of those things that you say were said, were said, let's just say everybody was shady. It's okay but uh, can we move on now? That's what Ru, that is what Ru wants. I think the people that want Uru to fight are people around him. Then Jojo says, but you guys have been shading Uru because you've been posting things on the internet to say Ru is a Motorola, what, what. And then Marie said, I don't remember ever saying that. Please prove it. Jojo takes out the phone and there is a post where Maria is saying, moving on from something moving on and upgrading, and Maria is with Nell. So I kind of feel like, yes, you guys, it was shady, but I feel like Giorgio is the one that is bothered with the shade more than the person that was being shaded because the shade was directed at Ru, okay? So I feel like instead of Giorgio and Maria talking about their own issues, they are making it about Ru and Neil. That's why I kind of don't like the addition of the gays because I just feel like in this episode, this was an episode where people were also supposed to talk about the issues, but it's all about the gays this time. So, yeah, you guys, that's what happened. Let me see if I'm forgetting uh, anything, you guys. So then... Um, yeah, so there was a, a back and forth between Angel and Unil uh, where she was feeling like Unil uh, is uh, screaming at her or shouting at her and uh, all of that, you guys. And then uh, Uzama did make a comment. Zama was like, you know what, guys? I feel like you guys had the event last, last episode where you said that you were moving on. Remember, they were in the uh, bonfire and they were burning their issues. They were forgiving each other. And she says, but it just seems like nobody has forgiven. Nobody has moved on because now a few uh, weeks later, you are still talking about the same thing. It was a few weeks or a few days later. You are still talking about the same thing. So me as a new person coming into the group, it confuses me what's going on here. So I guess people need to do, people need to talk uh to each other okay and uh yes you guys and i think nos lee did contribute to say to angel listen it does feel like you you're trying to start something because you are asking people why they are no longer friends with each other why they are shading each other 
but you were not there even when they were friends because Maria was saying that it, was, it, it seemed like the new people in the group are trying to uh, get us to not forgive each other, okay? And Uzama was like, I hope it's not me because I'm also new. She was like, no, but I don't mean you. But that's what was going on, you guys. Lee said that um, Angel might have been right in trying to bring up what the issues were, but the way that she was doing it was not right. She did apologize to Zama, or Angel, saying that, you know, I apologize for how I approached you about the baby thing, and my delivery was wrong. That's not who I am. And I don't know, I never understand that thing, you guys. I never understand. Like, if uh, if you say something to me and I got angry and I responded in anger, I don't understand how I can then say, guys, that's not who I am. No, that, that was me. It was me in anger, you know? <laughs> Maybe I can say I should not have been, you know? Um, you know, or I should not have spoken to you while I was still angry, but that is definitely you. That is who you are when, you be, when you're being shady. <laughs> Absolutely, that is who you are, okay? And listen, I think that oh, oh Angel, her, you know, for her to do well on the show, especially when it comes to building friendships with the other ladies, she has to be careful not to be that person that is used by the producers. I think whenever the producers want to get them to talk about something, I think because she's young, I think because she's naive, they're going to ask her to do it. And that is going to irritate people. And that is going to make people not want to uh, uh, build friendships with her on the show. That is not a good position to be in on the show. You have to give enough, uh, but also allow yourself uh, to be in a space where people like you enough to want to still shoot with you in the next season. So when you are somebody that people are like, I just can't deal with her, it's difficult for you to come back. So I think she has to come. I think because she's young, that's the reason producers brought her because they are going to use her. All of the crazy stuff that is going to happen this season, Angel is going to be the one that they're going to use. Anyway, you guys, that is the episode for today. Listen, you guys, if long uh, reviews are not for you, it's okay. They are for us and we love them that way. Anyway, thank you so much, you guys. Tell me in the comment section what you think about uh, this episode. I like the video before Pumegona. Share it with your friends, with your family, and even with strangers. Give me tanda. Kakou.